Adventure for Savage Spin, a blaster that a lot of people should probably pay attention to. Not that I've unboxed it or anything yet, but I have a good feeling this is going to be a very popular and good blaster. Because Dart Zone blasters or Adventure Force Primetime toys, whatever you fancy, have been exceptionally good especially their flywheelers. And this one, it's really kind of daunting because you don't really notice it like, oh, it's got these cylinders is basically just a giant barricade, right? It holds 45 darts in all three cylinders and you swap cylinders via a pump and you can even swap out the entire drum mechanism if you chose. That is a lot. Plus, it just looks cool. Plus, it's got an extendable stock. Plus, Nice clicky rev button. And if we, a buttery, like look, pinky, I'll pinky it. Super light, buttery smooth trigger. This blaster is gonna be awesome. I have a good feeling about it. And it comes with 45 of the best darts you could possibly get right now, in my opinion, the Adventure Force Waffles. On the back of the box, we get extends up to two feet. Wow, that stock apparently really does telescope. You can press the button to release it. It's got a trigger, it's got a rev trigger. You slide back to switch drums. So you basically pump it back and forth in order to switch the drums. High capacity triple drums, 15 darts each, which is actually pretty exceptional. And of course, with something like this, you can easily rear load it if it isn't already built for that. I kind of doubt it is, but it would be really easy to fit rear loading slots on it. And of course you have a switch on it where you can take out the entire drum mechanism if you want to. I don't see many people buying multiples of these, but okay, hey, whatever you want to do. Shoots up to 80 feet, it says, which probably means it's about a 90, 95 FPS blast out of the box, running off six AA batteries. And it's simply just held in with zip ties. So we're just gonna grab our trusty snippers here and clip this thing out. Boing, bonk, zap. And we get the blaster right there. I just noticed it had a grip guard, so I'm even more excited. One zip tie frees the drums. And then of course we can just kinda break down the box ever so slightly. Oh, they tape their darts in like Hatsbro does. Don't do that, Dart Zone. It is a bad idea. All your darts come in one nice little package like this. One piece of tape held them in the pack. I guess that's a good idea, but I really like it when these are just really easy to pull back and remove. And the blaster itself. Yes, it does have a grip guard. I just now realized that. Like this, um, that's rather interesting because I have this thing kind of poking into my wrist, but it does act like a wrist support if you really want it to. And you notice it's a very slim profile and it's really squared off, which I appreciate. No kind of attachment rails or anything on it, except for this up here, but I don't know anything that fits on there, except for maybe those things on the, uh, I guess the titanium? No, it was the accelerator had some stuff that might fit on there, but dart detector, everything you would expect. Savage Spin Adventure Force, Savage Spin Adventure Force mirrored on both sides perfectly. It's completely symmetrical. Let's see how much the stock actually telescopes out. It looks like that's as good as it goes, which uh, isn't that good to be perfectly honest. I wish it would go out a little bit more. Shoulder stock has three lock positions. I'm guessing it's just... Yep, that's as good as it goes, unfortunately. Which is not bad, but it's a little short for... Are you kidding me? Come on. Uh-oh. Um... Well... That's a bit disappointing. The stock doesn't exactly work well because it easily collapses in, at least on my unit. That's... Whatever, that's a, that's a point against it, although that may just be my blaster I have here. We can just, well, this switch right here is what keeps the drum from coming out, but we just put that in there like that. Boom, it clicks into place. Push that back, it's locked in place. Oh, that is cool. So you're meant to hold the thing kind of like this, which is, I will say, not the most comfortable deal ever, but it does work. Oh, oh man. Oh my God, that mechanism works so good. Well, that's incredibly nice. Again, it's a little weird to hold it kind of like this, but the entire
entire mechanism. Oh, it jammed up a little bit right there. Ooh. There we go. Make sure you push this all the way forward. Uh, you could actually fit a lipo in there, but you'd be cutting it extremely close. Better yet, I bet this entire tray will pop out and there might be a little bit of space underneath of it. Doesn't sound all that happy. Very loose fit, so it's really easy to get darts in there. Of course, it doesn't need a whole a lot of friction to hold darts in, and of course, since it's not an air blaster, it doesn't need a big grip on the dart to begin with. So now that I have one filled, I can have one chamber ready to go. And yes, this is as quick as a magazine, but it's a bit faster than yanking a mag out and filling it up by hand. It's a little bit faster anyway, it's not a whole lot faster. It's good to have one of these kinds of blasters in your squad. So when you're kind of screwed on changing mags and stuff like that, a good semi-auto blaster with a high capacity that is a front load like this can kind of keep anybody who gets too close at bay. Fire up the chronograph. One of my wheels sounds a little wobbly, but hopefully it's not too bad. 80.3. Uh, oh, it's because I'm resting it on the table. Or not. Ooh. 86.9, and 93.8. That was a lot of shots, and that was only one drum. And it took a little bit. I think the motors needed to get broken in a little bit. I think it needed a little bit of dart foam on there, but that worked out perfectly. So my conclusion so far is this thing is actually really nifty. Performance is definitely there for what you'd want from a blaster like this. It's very intimidating because that's what your opponent gets to see is this thing flipping around and boom I just swapped it to that holding my other hand I can easily top this thing back up and if I need to I can keep it revving and point it at a target and be filling this thing up that wheel sounds like death though in mine oh there we go this is either some kind of crescendo and then if I need to Got another drum, this drum is still accessible. I can just easily switch hands and you can keep loading it up. So it's a very effective blaster in that regard. Yes, it's not a mag change, but most people are gonna be using 18 or 22 dart mags. This thing holds 45 darts. So it's basically two mags worth or more on you. So I've had a couple of days now to spend with a Savage Spin and I gotta say, I like it a lot. If I were to give this a grade, I would give it a gold medal. I think just about anybody should pick one of these things up. Even if you have a lot of flywheelers, even if you have a lot of uses, this kind of fills a niche that, you know, we have things that work with a cylinder kind of, you know, flywheel blaster, something that doesn't use magazines or a hop or anything like that. But at the same time, it does it pretty much in the best way possible. Really, the only thing they could do is add another drum or something to it or make the drums bigger, but a 45 dart capacity is 
completely usable in a game. It's absolutely, it could get you through entire matches of just normal, you know, PvP engagements, no problem. And then if you go to like an HVC setup, you have an edge and you have a con. Obviously, you don't have magazines, so you can't completely refill your ammunition at any moment. But because of that, you have a neat little feature where you don't need to worry about having mags. So you, if you have no blasters and you're for some reason watching this video, you could pick one of these things up from Walmart for 30 bucks and you would have a good blaster, a decent velocity. Again, this thing hits really hard for a stock blaster, way harder than any nerf blaster. And you can be shooting or revving at a point, like say a doorway or a corner or something like that, and be topping up your blaster on the go. All you need is a dump pouch full of darts. And the darts for these, you know, Adventure Force waffles are, you can get 200 of them for 10 bucks right next to the blaster in the store. So I can't recommend that enough. And then if you really want to, you could buy two of them and you could have a whole extra set of drums. So you could have, I wouldn't recommend having like multiples of these, but if you had one of these on you, just in case something went wrong, you really needed to do a full reload. This is 45 darts. That is really good. And of course, this is a flywheel blaster, so it's semi-auto. And semi-auto is usually better for something like HVZ because you don't need, even PVP, you usually only need one dart to tag someone. So full auto can be detrimental. This one, definitely a great mid to long range, long engagement option for you. 45 darts in something like this. Yes, you do have to do the swap. That's how long it takes. It takes longer to shoot a dart than it takes to flip the cylinders. And it's a very comfortable blaster at that. Yes, my stock does not work. I have confirmed this is supposed to be a button. Mine is clearly broken. That is a minor complaint that I am capable of fixing. And if I really cared, I would just take it back to Walmart and make sure both buttons worked when I was checking it out in the store. But I mean, I got a Titan CS50 and the drum didn't work. And that was the main reason you'd want the blaster. And that was extremely disappointing because the blaster doesn't even come out till October. I got one early and it, it didn't work. Uh, Still, really salty about that. Really, the only thing I wanna see done with a blaster like this is I really want a company to take the time and effort to come up with some kind of system where you can easily load a blaster from the front. Obviously, it has little stops back here so you can do that, but something like this would be perfect to be able to use with rear loading slots and some kind of like tiny funnel system or something would be great, I'm not sure but I'd really like to see that in a blaster because it would be way better if I had the blaster like this and I needed to top it up on the field. If I wasn't having to go like this, cause that's a little more difficult. If I could just press darts into the back, it would be far more efficient for me, but that's a very minor complaint and no blaster really does that. Yes, I could sand these things out, but that could lead to more problems. These turrets are rather loose fitting. So that probably has something to do with the extremely light and crisp trigger pull on this thing. Really this blaster is just a dream to use and I can't recommend it enough. Again, the Savage Spin is able to be picked up at your local Walmart for $30 if you live in the US outside the country. I honestly have no idea and I'm sorry about that. I bought this thing for $30. It was not sent to me for review and I still have an extremely high opinion of it, but I really wanna get what your feedback is on the Savage Spin. I think it's one of the best blasters this year. It's definitely ticking all of the boxes. It's unique, it's fun, it's powerful, it has a use. I have no complaints about it, but I'd really like to get your, but I would really like to get your opinions down in that comment section. I do read just about every single comment I get. So thank you very much. Other than that, I'm Walk on my seven. Thank you so very much for watching this video. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one. You gotta up, up, say.